David Smith here with one more Flip Classroom math video. Three tips before we start. Remember, you can pause the video at any time to catch up with your notes. You can also turn on the caption down below and watch my words go by on your screen. Lastly, if you feel like you can do this, you can speed up the playback and get through the video a little bit faster. Today's topic is arc length. So what we're going to do is take a look at some circles and look at measuring parts of their circumferences. So what we're going to do is start off with a basic circle, like here, circumference of a circle. Here's my diagram. Got my radius here, it goes all the way around. Circumference of the circle is 2 pi r. Makes sense. That's our formula. But now let's start chopping that up a little bit. Let's say we go 270 degrees around instead of 360, so we're not all the way around. What would the length of this arc be? We can't call it a circumference because it's not going all the way around, so we call it an arc. And that's pretty much what we'll be doing in this chapter. So just remember, an arc is a partial circumference. Okay, so on this one, what would the arc length be? What would a formula for the arc length be? Pause the video for a second, see if you can think it out through. Compare it to this one, and then see what you would do with that one. Okay, a couple ways to go. I'm just going to use your real basic fractions here. 270 is 3 quarters of the way around. It's 3 quarters of 360. So the formula for this arc is going to be 3 quarters of this. So it's going to be 3 over 4 times 2 pi r. Now we could simplify that a little bit, but right now we're just going to leave it right there. Now pause the video and see if you can do that one. Okay, so 180 is half of 360. So the arc length here is going to be 1 half times 2 pi r. And let's cancel those 2's out. So this one's just going to be pi r. And that kind of makes sense. If the full circumference is 2 pi r, then the half circumference arc should be pi r. Sweet. Okay, what I'd like you to do is try these three. And notice that this one does not have a number. It's got a variable. That's alpha degrees. And those Greek letters are commonly used to represent angles that we don't know. Okay? So first do the 90 and the 45. And then if you're feeling bold, try this one with the alpha. Okay, let's see how you did. The 90 is a quarter of the way around a circle. 90 is 1 fourth of 360. So we could do 1 quarter times 2 pi r. And that's going to cancel down to um, pi r over 2. And that makes sense if halfway around is pi r, a quarter of the way around is going to be half of that. So this one is pi r, so that one is pi r over 2. That's a half of pi r. Okay, let's take a look at that one. 45 is 1 eighth of the way around a circle, so this is going to be 1 eighth times 2 pi r, which reduces down to pi r over 4. That's 1 quarter pi r. Okay? So this one's a little tougher. I'm curious to know what you got for that. Um, if you haven't tried it yet, pause the video, be bold, try to see if you can come up with a formula for that when you don't know what the angle is. Okay, here's one. You'll notice that all these fractions that we used to multiply pi r were fractions of the degrees out of 360. So all you've got to do is do alpha degrees over 360 times 2 pi r. And that will give you the arc length for any arc. Okay, so let's formalize that last result that we got on the last board. Here we go, arc length. You're going to see the lowercase l used as a variable for arc length. Remember, we can't call it c, which is for circumference, because that's only for a full circle. So l is an arc length. And what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the angle that the arc subtends. That's the word for it. You've got some arc, and it's making an angle out of a whole circle. So you've got that angle, and you're going to multiply it by 2 pi r over 360. That's the, the formula that we had just down there in the corner. Rearranged a little bit, but that's essentially what that is. And then this can be reduced. We have 2 over 360, so the 2 can go away. And we just have the angle 
pi r over 180. And that's the simplest formula that you can use. This one also works, but this is the one you want to take away with you. That's how to find arc length, um, use that formula. So let's do a couple problems. Okay, so let's do a practical problem. This is a real straightforward one that just allows you to plug into the formula. I'm going to draw a diagram for you too because I think that's helpful. So here's the problem. Find the length of an arc of a circle with radius 2 centimeters and a central angle of 120. So once you have this mastered, you probably don't need to draw a diagram, but I want to do that with this problem just to be on the thorough side. So pause the video right now and see if you can draw a diagram of this problem, kind of similar to those diagrams we drew in the last screen. Okay, here we go. There's my full circle. 180 is here, 90 is there, 120 is right there. So we're going 120 degrees, like that. This is L, that's my arc length, this is the length of that arc, and my radius is two centimeters. Okay, so that's a diagram of this problem. So now let's find our L. L equals the angle 120 times pi times 2 over 180. Just like that, and I know you've heard this before, but make sure you show me the plug-in step when you do a problem using a formula. That tells me what your thinking is. It's also quick, a quick way to catch mistakes. Can we get your video? I'm just gonna, you can come in for a little while, but you have to be absolutely quiet. Okay, okay. okay. Thank you, David. You're welcome. I mean, I'm just going to record just one little quick bullet, okay. and then okay. I'm going to erase okay. the board and try something else. Okay. All right. Action. Okay, so I did my calculation. Put it all in my calculator. You want to make sure you can do that correctly. And this is the answer I come up with to three significant figures. Oh my gosh, that's so cool! Okay, let's do an IB style question that has you use this idea. And a little more. So let's take a look. Here's our, our formula. I've got that up here just for reference. Now let's take a look at the problem. The tallest Ferris wheel, and I believe this is the tallest Ferris wheel ever built, has a diameter of 520 feet. That's a really big. Um, and it makes one rotation in 30 minutes. That's because the cars on this Ferris wheel hold like literally 30 people. So they bring a car, a lot of people get off, a lot of people get on, then it moves around. So it's like takes a while to get around. Okay, so let's take a look at some questions you might be asked. Now, IB tends to lead you into things, so this question isn't about arc length. This one is, and this is not, but they're all in the same problem, and they're all reasonable questions to ask. So, first question, how far does a person travel in one rotation? So this is the distance around. If you, if you drag a string around and straighten that out, that would be the distance. So go ahead and pause the video right now and do that calculation. Okay, this is a straightforward circumference calculation. We don't have an arc yet because we're going all the way around one rotation. So that's just going to be c equals 2 pi r, which equals 2 times pi times 520. Now, there's an error there. Pause the video and see if you can find it. Did you find it? Okay, check it out. Diameter of 520. Radius has to be 260. Remember? Radius is half the diameter. Okay, so I did my calc and I end up with 16.33 feet. And obviously I'm going to two decimal places with this particular problem. So we could put here um, 2 dp. And you might see that instruction on a test or on your IB exam. Okay, so that's good. Now we know how long that person travels to go all the way around. Now we're being asked, how far does a person travel in 45 minutes? Okay, now you know some information about how long it takes for one rotation. So you're going to have to use that with the 45 minutes to figure this out. And you ultimately need to use an arc lake equation here to find your, your distance. So go ahead and pause the video and give that a shot. Okay, let's see how you did. The first one here is I need to have a feeling for how many degrees 45 minutes would be around the circle. So I like diagrams. Whenever I'm in geometry, I love my diagrams. So here's my Ferris wheel. 
let's say they're starting there, right? And they go around. There's 30 minutes. That's one full round. Now, we're going another 15 minutes. So that's a half rotation. So they're going to go all the way around to there. So they're going to have 1.5 rotations. So 1.5 rotations times 360 degrees. We know each rotation is 360 degrees, so 1.5 times 360 will tell us what one and a half rotations are, and that is 540 degrees. So now we have our central angle, our alpha for the formula. So if you haven't already done that calc, now grab this alpha, plug it into your equation, and do your calculation. Okay, let's see how you did. L is going to be 540 times pi 260 for radius over 180. So if you haven't done that calc, do that now. Make sure you can do that on your calculator. Okay, when I punch those numbers in, I get 2450.45 feet. Now, I'm a curious person. I want to make sure that's right. So, if this is right, and I've gone 15 more minutes, I've gone another half circle, this number should be 1.5 times that number. And I did that. I took out my calculator, did it in, and sure enough, that works. Okay, let's move on to this last part. How fast does a person on the wheel travel? I left the L off. And what this means is there's a person on the outside of the wheel, and they're going at a speed as though that wheel were rolled out flat. They're just going along the ground at that speed. We can assume the wheel moves at a constant speed. So this question is, what is that speed in feet per second? This is not a super hard calculation, but it's a different one. I haven't set you up for this, but the idea is famous for mixing things together in problems. So like I said before, here's the arc length problem. Here's a circle circumference problem, and now here's a rate problem. So see if you can figure that out. Okay, let's take a look at this. Distance per unit time, that's speed, right? So we just need like um, speed equals distance per time. And in this one, it, we're being asked for feet per second. So in one full rotation, it's going to travel, the person's going to travel this distance. So that's on the top, 1633.63 feet. And how far do the, how, how many seconds is that? Well, we know they go around in 30 minutes. So 30 times 60 seconds per minute gives us 1800 uh, seconds. So now I just have to do a little division. Okay, I did a little bit of calculating, and what I got was 0 0.91 feet per second. Now this is how I came up writing these units. Feet, feet slash second, distance per time. The IB textbook uses this notation. 0 0.91 feet per second to the minus one. And that just means the negative one power puts that on the bottom of the fraction. So F feet second negative one means the same thing, and I just thought I'd explain that in case that was looking weird in our textbook. Now that you've watched the video, take a moment to jot down extra notes or jot down some questions for our next class. You can also re-watch portions of the video that you didn't get the first time. If you enjoyed the video, please click like, and if you'd like to help me grow my YouTube channel, please click subscribe.